Okay. We're going to take this Photoshop document and we're going to use it as the basis to turn to actually create the, the working HTML slash CSS file. So we've got everything. Now, typically the way that this would work is you do a site scope like we did all last week. Then you take that site scope and you make a Photoshop mockup so that you've got all the visual elements exactly where you want and it's starting to look exactly as the final product would, but of course it doesn't actually work. It's just a uh, layers in a, in a Photoshop document. Then the last step is, now that I know where everything's supposed to be, I know my colors, I know my fonts, I know the placement of everything, I know how it's all going to kind of work together, now I'm going to turn that into HTML. So I've, we're kind of skipping over the site scope to Photoshop part of this and jumping from Photoshop to HTML. So looking at this design, what do you think the next step should be? Any ideas? Before that. What I actually suggest in this situation is that we go back sort of to a wireframe model. Um, I need to be able to put a bunch of divs on the page for every one of these boxes that's here. So I'm going to need to figure out where those divs go, what their placement's going to be. I can probably even start to figure out names for them. So if you guys keep yours up. Um, I've got Illustrator up and running and what I'm thinking is that I need to figure out every div that I need to drop on the page will become effectively a little box. So I'm going to have that, there's two sort of boxes across the very top, right? Um, one of them says about, advertise, and log in. And then the one under that is the, the actual logo itself. So what I'll probably end up doing is coming in here and I can put some little labels on this. So this is sort of a, this one here is my menu, this one here is my logo. But these have sort of some sub options inside of them. Um, for example, over on the right hand side, there is uh, social media. S O C I A L media. There we go. And then under that is another menu of options. Now, the other problem with this, oh no, let me go to the next thing. After that, there's a giant space and sort of my, the bulk of the, the bulk of the site is here. Let me flip that around. There we go. And there is one problem that I immediately see, and that's going to be that we're trying to keep the menu and the logo, all of the items in those top two bars, we want to keep them th centered in the middle of the page. But the two bars behind it stretch all the way to the ends of the page. So here, see how it all s nice and lines up on this left edge and on this right edge? Well, we need these two graphics to sort of spread out beyond that. The best way to handle that with CSS is to actually put in a couple of sub. Get rid of some of these. Go away. I don't need them. There we go. Get rid of. Uh, put a, a s uh, sub div inside each of these divs. That's going to be the exact same width as the main content area. that behind everything. Now divs by default try to stretch to take up the entire 100% width of the space. But then I can have a div inside of that that's set to 960 pixels wide and then it's got that left and right auto margin thing and that'll center it inside there. Do you remember doing that? Okay. So if I do that for both of these logo, there's my menu, and so basically all three of these boxes are going to be 960 wide, auto left and right, um, I'll have 
these two boxes, the top and the sub one underneath of that, they'll stretch all the way and I can create a little background graphic for that that just repeats inside that little box um, and that should take care of that. A couple of other things I'm expecting is that uh, this menu should probably be a an unordered list. We can turn it uh, horizontally by floating the list items to the left. Um, I'll probably end up doing the exact same thing down on this one. Unordered list. Social media, they've got little icons for uh, they've got two graphics in there, one for Facebook and one for Twitter. Um, that could probably also be an unordered list, and in each, each of the list items is just the graphic linking back over to Facebook or Twitter. And that way, we can add more, we can add Pinterest and Vimeo and YouTube and whatever other uh, social media we want to add. So in this instance, I'd say it's going to be a UL of IMG tags. I will also say that I usually don't put what these tags are going to be. After you do this a couple of times, you'll, you'll know exactly what it is you're going to end up using. Um, the logo, that's just going to be an image. And there's a fairly sizable gap underneath of this space right here. Um, in Photoshop, if you're going to be very, very concerned about um, your design, what you might end up doing, and I don't know where they put this anymore, yeah, the ruler. You can use a ruler, and where'd the info tab go? Length. It looks like that's about 50 pixels. And I'm guessing this one is 2, it looks like it's 49, I'll call that 50. And I bet this is almost the exact same. So that means I might also want to put the dimensions of these in here in my in my wireframe. So I'll put 50 px, and you know what? I'll make that a slightly different font size. I'll make that like 10 points, so that's a little different. That's 50. That's 50, and that dimension's also going to be 50. This one's going to be. 960. Can you already see how this is going to shape up? Can you see the HTML in your head? Yeah, good. Um, next, you got to worry about this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Tab this out. There's a couple of things about this design I don't I don't like entirely. I don't know exactly what this bar across the top is supposed to be, that where it says hello. So I'm going to, I think we can probably get rid of that, ignore it, let it go away. Um, but this is doable. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a div that's over on the left hand side. This is going to be a div that goes over to the right hand side. And there's some sort of JavaScript, JavaScript or jQuery slider that we would attach in there. That's in the Web 215 class, so I'll just leave a box for it for now. Um, so in this box right here, what I would do, where did Illustrator go, is I'm going to have box on the left, box on the right, shrink these down just a little bit, um, and they'll just be half the 960 width. We might have some padding or something inside of there, but it also looks like this text, well, what do they got, a, a sort of a 20 pixel padding on the inside. Um, that's okay. I, I think that's actually a little bit much. I don't really like this 50 pixels right here. I think that's sort of wasted space. But anyway, we'll have, uh, I guess this will be an H1, some paragraphs of text, and then these look like graphics. Uh, so we might end up, no, this could be made in CSS. This actually could be buttons that go, or, or text links that we could turn into using a, it'd be a lot of CSS though. Um, I do like this. In Photoshop, they gave us the exact dimensions. I don't know if we'll need exactly that. Then we've got these graphics here. So this is a sort of a four-column design. 
Um, plus there's this little tiny divider between the two. The way I think that that should happen is that there should be a large container div and then four smaller divs inside of that. This container, this outer one, I'm actually going to make it completely invisible, except for putting that top border across it. That's why I want that. Um, it's also going to keep a separation between these divs up here. And oftentimes, some designers like to have, if you're going to do even a small set of sort of sub, uh, of two floated things, oftentimes many designers will actually put them in their own smaller container like this. I don't think we'll need to do that. I think we can get away without that. But I definitely think we need it for the, the four column area down at the bottom. Once we get past that, there's just sort of a single big area for the blog section. But, oh shoot, I got, a, I got these little guys, these sort of figures that go under these graphics. Um, I don't think that'll be difficult. We'll just put some padding under the images and then there'll be text under it. We might need to put build this little icon right here. I don't think this will be too difficult. This will be a little odd where it's got the date, sort of the tags that are on it, and then the number of comments. Um, I would probably say that we should do that as a, probably as an unordered list. doesn't have to be. That's kind of an arbitrary decision on my part. I, I just think we'll be working with a lot with unordered lists and this will be a, a good thing for it. Um, and each one of these will have its own class applied to it that pops this graphic in front of it and gives it whatever type treatment we want for the for a, one for a date, one for categories, and one for um, whatever that is, comments. It looks like they want to use this style button all over the place. So I would actually say we should make a class that takes links and makes them look like this. And um, I can definitely get it halfway there really pretty easily. So it looks like under here, we're going to have another nice big container. And then under that, it looks like that's where the footer goes. And the footer, one, oops, I got one, two, three, four, five columns. Save this at some point. We'll just put that on the desktop. Um, the other thing that I think would be important at this point is to actually put the, the IDs and the classes that we want to have. That way we've got them in one document when we start writing our CSS. We've already picked out all of those names and we're not making things up on the fly. You know, when we can see the big picture, let's name all of these things. So I guess we would call this, we can actually use a header tag for uh, some of these at the top. In fact, you can use multiple header tags. Sorry, let me zoom in on that. And we might call this one primary, secondary, I think the logo is going to be IMG pound logo. I'm also going to try and use lowercase for all of my tags. So the header should also be lowercase. Unordered list. Uh, is that like the main navigation? It's not. It's kind of a sub navigation, isn't it? What would be a good name for this? Not advertise login. I don't know, do this have sort of a common theme to them? I don't seem to. I don't know. 
I'll just call it a sub nav. I think that'll be fine. Social media, we'll make that UL pound social. This one I actually think should be nav unordered list. We use a nav tag around that, and that'll uh, move that around a bit. Uh, the logo's good. We have a nice little 50%. Um, what should be the name of this area? Is that what it is? News? Yeah, I guess that'll work. It'll just be div news. Div slider, I think would be fine for that. Um, what I'd like to do with this one is I'll call it div four column. Um, that way I know what the heck it is I'm doing. I'm supposed to put in there. And these can probably be classes just call them column. Um, in fact, I can think of how we can do that with just calling them divs without even giving them a class at all. Because as long as they're inside something with an ID, I can select just these divs and nothing else on the page. Um, this is supposed to be the blog area. So I'll call that div pound blog. And that'll probably end up having a bunch of stuff inside of it. Some h, h tags and stuff like that. This will end up being our footer, and then each one of these will be a, a div. Oh, the last one that I'm going to need is div container. I'll do that as the, the overarching, yeah, the thing that's going to contain the whole thing. All right, so based on that, you can probably turn that into an HTML pretty quickly, right? Let's see if I can do that. I need to have, if you want to start doing this, I'm going to set this up as a site in Dreamweaver and see what I can, what kind of trouble we can do. New folder uh, monoplate is the nice little name they've got for this. So I'll set up a new site, monoplate. select it and save it. Um, I'm pretty much just going to start off creating an index. I'll create a styles.css and in my index I will immediately link the two. Have I lost anyone with that? Everybody's cool with all those steps? You ever seen them done that fast before? Yeah. Okay, good. That should, that, yeah, that should be second nature to you, by, especially by the end of this semester. Um, God, now i got to put all this HTML code in. Okay, so the f first one was going to be, there's going to be a header at the top. That was going to be an ID of primary. There's going to be a header after that that was going to be an ID of secondary. Did I remember that correctly? Each one of these is going to need two sets of two unordered lists. So the first one is going to be sorry about advertised login. So design. I'm just going to do about advertise login. Highlight it. Turn it into a list. Drops it in the right place. Well, that's on separate lines. There we go. And what's this one supposed to be? That's our sub nav. ID equals sub nav. And then I need sort of the exact same thing for. 
social. So I'll be able to take one of these unordered lists, float this one to the left, float this one to the right, and it should work out pretty, I hope it'll work out pretty well. Oh, I think there was one thing I forgot with this. I need this little container div. I never did anything with that. I never gave that a name. Slash div. Uh, if it's the only div in there, I can probably get away with it. Oh, this is the one that we're going to turn into 960 pixels wide. And we're going to do like three of those. So I'm going to do a class of container. And I'll be able to put that on a couple of different things. For example, sorry, I know this is a little hard to read. So inside the the header will be the 100% wide, the div will keep it contained to 960, I'll float each UL left and right and do the little horizontal stuff in there. Um, and then I need to pretty much do almost the exact same thing for this guy, the secondary header. They're going to have the class of div container. The first one is actually just going to be an image, an ID of logo an SRC equal to nothing at the moment and an alt of logo. And then this isn't social anymore, this is a little different. This is the main navigation, right? So in addition to an unordered list, I'm going to put a nav tag around that. And what are the options for it? about, blog, and contact. I don't know why they have blog on there twice, but this is all just generic stuff. And that's not social anymore. In fact, I'm not going to worry about a, an ID on this because it's inside a nav tag. So far, it's the only nav tag we have on the entire page, so I can probably get away with using a just nav UL as my selector for that. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can certainly give them all IDs. There's kind of up to you. I'm going to try and do this with as little code as possible. Okay, then after that, I'm going to do the giant div that contains everything. Uh, this is where it's going to be fun. So that's the big one around everything. Then I need news slider, four column, blog, and footer. Blah. All right, I'm going to start using the insert, the fun little buttons that let me help. Insert div tag. This was going to be ID of news. And actually, when you do this, it's usually a good idea to do something like news. Otherwise, they collapse down onto really small. News slider. Then under that is going to be four column. And you know what? Now that I think about that, that might work better as a class. In case I ever need to have a situation where I want several four columns on the page, I want to be able to reuse that. I can see four column being something that would be, I might need that for. So I'll just call that a class for now. And inside four column, I'm going to have a whole bunch of just regular old divs, column one. Two, three, and four. We'll figure out what goes in there later. Okay, so there's four column. Then after that is going to be the blog. I'm going to give make that a class too because that one might end up being reusable. And then I'm going to do the footer at the end of the page. And that one needs to have a whole bunch of div tag div columns inside of it. Were there five? Okay. And it goes down to the end of my div. 63 lines of code so far. That's not bad. Let's see what this actually looks like in design view. Looks horrible, right? <laughs> um, obviously, no CSS yet. In fact, for my CSS, I think the very first thing I'm going to do is just start 
um, dropping in a blank selector for each of the different things that I just created. So I'm going to need one for header primary. I'm going to need header secondary. And inside that, I'm also going to have what is it? header primary. Crud, what do I call that stuff? Header primary. Uh, the container, I'm not too worried. Subnav and social. Those are pounds, aren't they? Subnav. Social. I prefer to put all of this at the beginning of my selectors, just so I n they're all nice and grouped together. This is probably completely unnecessary and a little redundant, but I'll be able to look at that and know where it belongs on the page. I'm trying to keep them sort of grouped together by where they're grouped together in their HTML as well. So the subnav is going to get a little bit more hairy because the subnav is the unordered list, but there are also list items inside that, and then the A tags will be inside those. I don't think I put those in. Um, the same with social. Oh, no, not quite. Those are going to be list items. Those are going to be list items with images. Yeah, it'll actually work like this. The images are inside the A, are inside the list item, are inside the pound social, which is the same as the unordered list. So, yeah, it's a lot, but it lets me, even if I don't end up using all of these, I can at some point go in and take control of each one of those elements. Um, and usually at this stage, I'm writing way more CSS selectors than I'll ever use. But this is definitely helps keep me organized. Um, secondary is going to be header secondary image with a pound of logo, right? Is that what we called it? Yeah. And then yeah, that's all we'll need to do. It'll just be a big graphic sitting there. We're not going to have hovers or anything weird. It's just going to be giant graphics sitting there, so I don't need to worry about anything else. Oh god, I forgot to do focus, hover, active, all that for these as well. We'll need to put those in in, in a minute. Um, header secondary is also going to have yeah. nav, that's it. Nav had an unordered list inside of it of source code. There's the nav. We didn't give it an, a name, so I'm just going to call it the unordered list, the list item, and then the A tags. Nav U L L I, Nav U L L I A. God, that's just for the two blocks at the header. Um, at this point, I also want to have a container, which I can write by hand. That's going to be width of 960 pixels, margin zero, top and bottom, auto left and right. That actually might just start showing up already. Or not? Um, I think in the CSS you have to like refresh, like in the CSS command. Sure. Oh, I know why. I haven't written them properly yet. I think this is all one giant selector because I don't have my brackets in yet. I usually do that at the end, just because it's a little bit easier to do it this way. Now let's see what you like. Okay. Still doesn't like it. Do I have things set up right in my source code? Class equal container. Do I spell that the same? It's a class, so that should be appropriate. Yep. Yeah. See how the, um, the last one I call in there is a different color? Yes. That's what it was. Oh, that's because I have the resolution set so low. This is only 967 pixels wide, so it may actually be working. It just has three and a half pixels on each side to show us. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that's taken up by this extra space right here. Um, oops, come back. Actually, I'm going to go back up to the top and do one little thing, body. 
I'm going to set the padding to zero and the margin to zero and that should push everything right to the edges a little bit. Good. All right, so after container, what do we have? Source code here. So container, there's a the class. I need news, slider, and then the four column. So let me do that. Go away. Code. So pound news, pound slider, class four column. And that's going to be dot four column div. And then if you want to be able to have control over each individual one inside this four column, the way that you do that is with adjacent sibling selector, which I know you've done, but probably didn't understand what the heck it was for. I did. Div plus div. Ooh, my, my finger's in the right place. That will grab the second, third, and fourth one. Any div that has a div before it. If I keep adding to that, this will grab the third and fourth one. This will grab just the fourth one. Now the way I can effectively write this is, this will be the first one, and it'll actually, whatever I write here will apply to all of them, which is kind of okay. But if I need to style the, the second, third, or fourth ones with some weird thing. I can actually do that with just this. Um, so the top one controls all of them, but if you want to make them individual but still maintain some sort of uniform, mm -hmm. you can change. I can add some little properties to the to them. So for example, usually what ends up happening is the spacing becomes an issue. Um, if you add, for example, just a right margin of 20 pixels to all of those, except, or I'm sorry, add a left margin so that they all push 20 pixels off to the left. But you might also need to add 20 pixels to the right margin of the last one so that it all evens out properly. This would let you do that, grabbing just those. Uh, let's see, after that it's going to be blog. Wait, no, that's a class, isn't it? Um, what, am I missing some other stuff? News, slider, there's a class. Okay, there's going to be blog and then the footer in its columns. Uh, footer. Footer, I'm just going to do this. I'm also thinking that once we actually get into things like the blog or the news area, we might need to have things like h2s, dot blog, paragraphs, um, and anything else that we'll end up needing there. I don't remember exactly everything, but I can add those later. Um, if you want to be even more uh, organized about this, you can start adding, yeah adding little comments to keep yourself incredibly well organized. Um, I highly recommend that. I just don't think we have enough time for me to go through all of them. Um, and let's see how bad this works right now. I think it is actually working. It's, I see the same distance on the left and the right. I think I could actually test that out just because my resolution is so low. If I change this to 900, it should shrink up a little bit more. Yes, things are actually working it looks like. Awesome. Let me see, does this tell me anything bad going on? Every, I can see all of the selectors here, so I don't think I, I think I fixed all the problems that I had. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so a couple of things that you might want to also start off with when you're doing this is not only your your body, do you set the, the padding and the margin? This is also where you set your default font. And usually what I like to do is, uh, Dreamweaver does this pretty well, so I don't, I'm just going to pick one here. Trebuchet, 12 point, 
normal with a line height of 1.5 m's. That spaces out things a little bit more. I find that 1.5 is a little bit more legible. What it does is an m is based off the font size. So whatever I change this to, it'll always be one and a half times. So my line height is now 18. If I set it to this, it'll be 15. And the computer figures that out for me. So I can go in and change the font size all I want, and the line height changes proportionally. Let's leave it at 12 for now. There we go. Uh, that's built into CSS. If you hand code it, it figures that out for you. So yeah, it, I'll show you the, the CSS for it. I could change, yeah, I could change that here, and now it'll be 30. Yeah, it, this is actually a multiplier of this number. So it doesn't matter what you put there. So that spaced the text out a little bit more if I set that to something like 2Ms. You can see it spaces out even more. I think 2 is a little bit, double spacing is a bit much, 1.5. Um, by default, it's about 1M. That's what HTML just does naturally, and I find that's really, really tight text, a little hard to read. Anyway, I could go through and pick some nice Google fonts, add them in here, and uh, I find that if you just go through your body tag and make these, make one font, then you do your H1, H2, H3, H4, usually I just do it all the way down to uh, sixes, and then I'll set those, not that one, this one, as my sans serif. No, this will have to be a serif, won't it? It's deeted. Oh, I think that's one I added. Um, there's Georgia. We'll do that. There we go. There's my sliders and things like that. All across the entire page, I've just set up all of my headers, all of my body text. I've got the two fonts that I need done, taken care of. Uh, okay. We got a lot of left and right stuff that we got to make happen. Um, some of these boxes have to go left and right and make sure things are working. So let's do. I'm going to leave the header alone. Oh, no, I shouldn't leave it alone. Just a second. All kinds of things are going to be going wrong in, the, in those top headers. Um, about advertise login. About advertise. I want to have that twice. Because that one's uh, social media. Is the okay. Which one is that? That's my logo. So I need Facebook, and then that will be Twitter, and that'll be YouTube. Okay, so yeah, that one's getting, that one's supposed to be up here. This one's supposed to be probably in the middle there. A uh, bunch of things are going wrong, uh, mostly because these unordered lists have a lot of margin and padding around them, and so they're they're ending up pushing other things away. So to fix that, what I would actually do is I'm going to take this primary, the sub nav, I'm gonna, that's the unordered list. I'll set its margin to zero. So just steal that from the body. Padding and margin, set that to zero. So if you change the padding and margin to whatever it is you're trying to alter, like if it's within the sub and yeah. you change the margin and the padding, it'll fix that. Uh, it might. I'm s sort of doing this on the fly at the moment, so some things are going to change, some things aren't. Subnav. Oh, I know what's going on. I also need to float that to the left. Even though it's on the left by default, I need floated elements. If something's not floated, the next thing that's floated after it will actually come underneath of it. So if they're both floated left and right, they'll both be on the same horizontal level. So let me see if I can just get that working first. And then the header will float over to the right, and then we'll grab 
will get rid of all its margins and paddings. Uh, for the secondary one, the logo we're going to float to the left and get rid of its margin and padding. The secondary one to the right, which I forgot to do, is going to be that. Okay, that's kind of what I expected to happen. So what's going on here now is, look, there's the image. It's getting stuck up here. Both of these are floated left, but the headers that these are sitting inside of are not floated. Floated objects do not play with unfloated objects. So these guys are they're like they're breaking out of their containers and just playing with each other now and doing weird, weird stuff. I need to get the headers to recognize the floated elements inside of them. Um, and that's actually they're inside the containers, right? There's a couple of ways that you can do this. This is actually the cheat overflow hidden. I want the container to understand the floated objects inside of it, and that is the cheat that tells any box, it's not meant to be used that way, but it tells those container boxes, start paying attention to the floated things. Don't, don't break out of them. You're stuck in prison now. Stay in there. Well, I want to get rid of margin and padding anyway because um, unordered lists have some margin and padding around them, and I want to be able to control that. Um, yeah, yeah. So let, I want to get rid of that. Um, in fact, I'll also want to get rid of the list. Oh shoot, I can't remember what it is. I want to get, get rid of the bullets. Subnav is going to be list none. Do it on the list items as well. Actually, I'll copy and paste that. Where'd it go? None. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's starting to try and organize it for me. So do it on the the unordered list, which has this I ID on it, do it on the list items, and I need to do it on all of them, which is annoying. Unordered list, and then the list items. Now, if I'd like to actually space those out, the best way to start doing that is with um, is actually the A tags. Um, what you end up having is the unordered list forms one box. Each list item is a sub box. Each A tag inside of that is another sub sub box. Um, and all of these links, I'd like to make them kind of look like buttons. And the way that you do that is here we go, a display box. That will turn them into the um, block, not box, display block. Now they, they'll have that full box model on them. I can apply padding to them, which actually increases the clickable area. Then I can do, I don't think this design calls for it, but then you can do uh, borders and push margins around after that. Um, so I'll do padding of 10 pixels all the way around. And it didn't work. Um, I don't think you have A tags on I don't. Oh, I don't. That's right. And I didn't have a colon there. Yep, those would probably help if they were actually A tags. I think I can do it a quick way. I just link it to itself. There we go. Now they're big boxes. They're effectively buttons that I can start playing with, uh, doing whatever I want with. The problem is that the very first one here. If I put 10 pixels of padding, it's pushing it off the left edge. That's going to be a design consideration. I want everything nice and lined up on this edge. So what actually I think is a better option, go back into styles, is instead of, where'd it go? Instead of padding 10 pixels,
set that to zero margin right of 20 pixels. What that will do is apparently nothing. Because I didn't spell it right. Margin dash right colon 20 pixels. Still didn't do it. Why don't you want to work? Did I spell everything right? I don't think so. I wonder if Dreamweaver is just not displaying it. What boxes? Yeah, they've got a margin on them, they're just not pushing away from it. I don't know why. I wonder if this, if that's just a... Okay, it's Dreamweaver is not rendering it. It looks like that 20 pixels is actually showing up. I hate when Dreamweaver does that, but it does it all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it does. Thank you. <laughs> um, almost there. I just want to add some left and right things to news. Should be float to the left. Slider is going to float to the right. Um, those are half 960. So I should probably put the widths in for that as well. I prefer to work in pixel dimensions rather than in percentages. I think that gives you a much cleaner design, a much more controlled design, um, unless you're dealing with an actual, you want a squishy design that, um, yeah. You either do everything in percentages or do everything in pixels. What's half of 960? 350, 380? No. 450 is half of 900 plus 30, 480. Blah. Let's see if it's real. Yeah, it kind of is. Weird things are going on. Oh, yeah. Good fix. Good catch. So let's see if that fixes some things. Good. Now that's working much better. Um, I think because they're slightly different sizes. Uh, in my source code... I believe it's because of these. One of them has an H1. H1s and H2s have some margin around them. H1s have a lot of margin. H2s have a little bit. So effectively, the slider is a slightly, they're not quite as big. Let me show you. In right now, what's going on is effectively the, the slider is just a little bit shorter. So that column actually starts, all those columns start here, and then they fit down to here. That's one of the other reasons why I wanted to have this box here. It'll contain all of those other boxes. What I can do is four column. Styles, get in there. Four column. Um, these divs, I'm going to float to the left. And their width is going to be 240 pixels. That's a quarter, right? Still doing weird things. What I now need is it's actually it's actually the exact same problem that we're having up here with all of these different things breaking out. Um, what's ending up happening is column one, two, three, and four. Uh, because this is still just a little bit smaller, these columns start in the first available left-hand spot they can find, which the news comes down to right about here. And these columns, oh, I can fit in there. So it just starts to, and then just drops down to the next line like a paragraph would. Um, I need the footer to go, to, to say, I want to go underneath of the news and the slider. Um, you didn't want to put news and um, slider in um, their own container, because that would be like the uh, it probably would. The other solution, 
is the four column is going to be clear both. And then it, w it knows to run away. This is the non-hack way of doing it. Um, it'll just stay away. There we go. Now they're nice and on their own. In fact, I'm probably going to end up doing the same for... No, I won't need to do the same for that. Um, but the nice thing is that I might go get out of here. I can add as much stuff to this, and the four column will always run underneath of the sliders. And why is that box like that? Uh, blogs doing weird stuff. Footer. All right, so let me get the uh, let me get the footer one working. The footer should be fairly simple as well. Um, footer div float left width nine sixty divided by five. Have I got it? One ninety two. Cool. Let's see if that fits. Hooray. It does. So I need to do a little bit more to, to get these in the right place. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the, the social media and, and those things, I need to get them working. But I've got a working superstructure for my website. Really all it needs now is I need to play with the fonts a little bit. Um, I need to get the graphics, which I've got, I've got them from Photoshop. Now I can actually start slicing things up, um, which is, is just incredibly easy. Watch this. For this one, I want, you can see the little checkerboard pattern that they've got. I can do this with a two pixel wide graphic. I just gotta make sure it's in the right, yeah, it's matching up. And the way that this will work is I need to open this, and that's going to be primary background dash. That's the primary header, right? Okay. I'll save that. Oops. I only have the one tiny little graphic. I really it's gonna be a GIF with like 64 colors, and it's, uh, it looks like it's only about 30, 24 colors or so. And it's going to be 173 bytes. Cool. I can live with that. That's definitely doable. Desktop, monoplate. I don't have an images folder yet. I would like one. I'm just going to do images only selected slices, just the one that I've got. Okay, whatever. Um, let me see if that actually worked in Dreamweaver. Images. Ah, I did a double images folder. I hate when it does that. Yeah. So. Let me fix that. Monoplate. Images, images. You get out of there. I make that mistake all the time. Even to this day, I still do that. So anyway, back in Dreamweaver, what I need is my header primary. I'm going to go make that a background. Background image, that little guy, apply. Haha, -ha, wait a minute. It's still not quite the right height. Okay, so I should probably mess with that a little bit. How high did I make this graphic? 50 pixels. So I will make, that's going to be under block, uh, no, box. I can make that entire header 50 pixels tall. Uh, now I've got other problems to deal with. I've got to get these things up and down and in, in the right place. And I still do that right? Yeah, that's header primary. That goes around everything. So let me see what live view looks like. Okay, that seems to be working correctly. Yeah, it's going across the entire page. Um, for the next one down, is that a gradient or is that... It looks like it's just a solid color. Wait a minute, let me be sure. bottom it's oh it has a blue of one 
at the top. Oh, it does change. It's a very slight gradient. I could do the exact same thing that I just did, um, create another little one column graphic for this gradient, or what I prefer to do in this situation is CSS gradient editor, and I go find it. Go make the computer make it for us. So it's good old Colorzilla. Come on, Colorzilla. In, okay, good. Uh, just need that. I need that one to be pure black. I need, oops, that one to be there about 50 each. I think I added a third one. I spelled. There we go. So there we go. And I'll um, yeah, I hate the I need support one. I'll copy that, and then that goes in my secondary, correct? Is that what I'm working on? Yeah. Header, oh god, things are moving around. Too much stuff. Secondary. Boom. Blah. And then I need to do height 50 pixels at the end. Let's see what that does. It's starting to come together as, as we've got it on the page. Um, The only other one I want to, I'm kind of worried about at the moment is going to be this guy, this gradient right here. Uh, how am I going to apply that to the page? The body is probably the best way to do it, but if you, let me see if Firefox let me do this. If you've ever, you ever seen the 3D view? of a web page. This is really cool. Uh, Firefox has this really cool thing. Let me get out of it. If you right click you can inspect elements. And it's kind of the web developer toolbar. You can actually sometimes you can click on things. Let me click on things. It's not doing it. Inspect element. It's uh, apparently it's not running properly, but you can usually <laughs> yeah, I know you will. <laughs> anyway, there's this button down here, 3D view, and it's you can see where all of the different boxes are. Um, I've, some people like this. I think it's a little weird because it'll do things like this. Let's see them sort of coming through. But Facebook yeah, Facebook is a little bit on the complicated side. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's sort of, it, when elements are within each other, they become this nice little pyramid organization. It actually is really, really incredibly useful. I, I have used this to figure out what the heck it was I did wrong before. I know. It like cuts it in half and like puts a box where the box should be. Yeah, it'll do weird stuff. Um, the other thing that's going on is uh, the body tag is essentially, I believe it's actually, it's either this one or this one. It's underneath of everything. Yeah. So there's my primary, there's my secondary. If I want a graphic to show up behind all of this stuff, it's going to have to start here at the top of the page. So if I do a gradient, the first 100 pixels are going to be completely hidden. So if I'm going to do my gradient for this next one, uh, I need Photoshop, I need the hex values. So I kind of want this one to start here. Let me zoom in a little more. Oh, you know what? It looks like there's a couple of, there's a slight uh, border to the bottom of some of these. I'll need to take that into account. Anyway, this color right there is going to be my hex code for the first one. So back here, my top one's going to be this guy. And then my bottom one is going to be come all the way down. I, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but mine stops right about there. <coughs> Actually, what I'm going to do is the one after that. Looks like it's continuing on. Maybe the other one at the bottom. 
Um, th there's a lot more contrast on this one, but oh. after that, it, it's actually the same color all the way down. It's a very, very light color, and what I'm going to do is have the background have a gradient, and then actually underneath of that is going to be the solid color. So it'll look like the gradient goes down into a solid color and it just goes forever. Oh. It's a total cheat. <laughs> um, where we go? So my second one's going to be this one. No, that was the same color. That was the same color. You didn't go through it. I did not. There we go. That's what I need. The 3D view, you can see stuff that's actually off the page. There we go. Yes. Yeah, so when you do the one where uh, we had the, the handicap accessibility thing where it's the, the thing off the 3,000 pixels off the screen, you'll see it. Copy that. This is the body I'm working on, right? Yes, we think. Run. Great. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, do that, and it's not going to quite, oh, weird stuff is going on. Let's see what Firefox says. Oh, I've never seen you do that before. Why is it doing that? Vertical. Size. It's not supposed to repeat. It's not supposed to repeat. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go back into Photoshop and I'm going to do this. That slider, slice go. I'm going to take this little tiny microscopic slice. Trying to figure out where it stops. I see it. And I'm going to call that body BG. And the stuff up here is just going to be behind everything. I actually don't care about that at all, do I? I don't want that. So then I'll save that out again. There we go. That's going to be a gradient. That should probably be. Let's see if I, if I make it 256. Is it going to look nice? With GIFs and gradients, if it's taller than 256, you probably have to switch over to a JPEG. Because a GIF can only do 256 colors. So if it's taller than 256, every horizontal row is a slightly different color. Uh, I think it's close enough. Actually, what size is it? Three hundred thirty-one. Yeah, it'll be okay. For this example, it'll be fine. All right, I have to go up here because it's going to make an images folder. Select the slices, save it. I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver. I'm going to wonder where the oh background's still there. Uh, back in my code, I'm going to undo that thing that I just did, get rid of that gradient. I could sit here and troubleshoot that, but it might take me an hour, so I think this is just easier. I'll take this body, I'll take the background, and grab my body on it, and I only want it to repeat X. I can never remember the difference between X and Y. The problem that's going to come down is that it's actually starting to repeat up at the very top. So it's actually behind these two graphics. I can push that down. Yep, set that to 100. That pushes it down 100 pixels. So if I were to take the header and the and the um, the two headers off, there would just be a giant 100 pixel white space behind them. What do you think of that?
Cool. Well, I've got this on video, so you guys can definitely...